Hello, welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making this animated flag effect. Let's get started. Now, this is the celebration of 100,000 subscribers. I can't believe we finally made it to 100k. It's ridiculous. Thank you. It's really cool. All right, cool. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to hit A to select all and X to delete because tradition. All right, so now we're going to go Shift A, Mesh, Plane. All right, now I'm going to take this and uh, we are going to go R to rotate. We're going to lock it on the Y and I'm going to go 90 to rotate this 90 degrees. So we need to make it uh, rectangular like a flag. So I'm going to go into edit mode. And I'll grab this first bit and I'll grab Y and we're going to pull it out. I'm going to put the origin right here on the side because this is the point from which we're going to get the flag to do its uh, flapping. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I will hit number two to go to the edge selection mode. I'll just click up here. And I'll select this edge and then shift S cursor to selected, which will put my 3D cursor right there. Now the 3D cursor doesn't, you know, it's not anything. It's just a way of saving a point in space, but it is where um, you put things in your scene. When you create a new object, it always puts it wherever the 3D cursor is, but it's a lot of cool functionality you can do with it. And um, one of the things I'm often doing is selecting my objects and coming up and going set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And that will just put the origin there. And the origin's the little orange dot it's sort of like the global position of the object. So if I rotate now, you can see it's going to rotate from that orange dot. So wherever that orange dot is, it's where it rotates. So if we create something else like a cube, you can see it's orange dots in the middle. So it rotates from the middle. So it's really handy. You can put them anywhere. Like, you know, you could go way off over here with the 3D cursor and, you know, object set origin 3D cursor. And now it's going to pivot from way over there. So it doesn't have to actually be on your geo. Pretty cool. All right. Now, let's see. I'm going to take this and I'm going to add a modifier. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier because at the moment it's just one polygon. Now I'm going to turn it off of Camel Clark. This is basically a subdivision surface that will smooth out all of the edges and stuff and make it this round shape. But I don't want to do that. I just want to add subdivision to the geometry. And um, I might take it up to two. Now you're not going to see anything at first, but that's okay. All right, so what we're going to do next is we've got the subdivision surface. This is increasing the subdivisions dynamically on my plane. And um, I want to first, we're going to create um, a bit of motion. So a bit of like, um, you know, wave motion. And we're going to use the wave modifier to do it. Now you can see the effect of those faces. You can see them appearing there. And um, if I hit play on my timeline, you can see that the wave modifier is giving me, you know, flag motion. Looks pretty cool. Now it's a bit um, chunky. Right, so we need to smooth this out as well. Now we can do that here, right? And increase the subdivisions, uh, which is probably a good idea. Uh, we can also right click and shade smooth. And uh, it's looking pretty good, but it looks like we've got this pond effect where this is like the center and it's rippling outward. So let's see what we can do to this to make it look a little bit better. Bear in mind, I've rotated my plane, right? 90 degrees on the Y. So if you haven't done that, uh, your wave will probably be moving in a different way. So for example, if I did this in edit mode and rotate Y 90 and then get out of edit mode, you can see how it's waving like this, right? So it does depend on kind of how the rotations are in this. So if you start with your um, plane flat like this, and then you rotate it uh, on the Y 90 degrees, so it'll look like mine, okay? So I'm going to come over here and uh, we're going to turn off Y, or sorry, X motion. I just want to have it going along uh, the edge here, but I don't want it to be waving right here at the beginning. So if you imagine like this orange dot where the pole is, the flagpole, you don't want to have it kind of waving off of that pole. You want it kind of stationary on that and let the wave happen progressively as it moves past it, right? So in order to do that, what we can do is we can create a vertex group. You see this vertex group option. This is basically going to define which vertexes are affected by this wave modifier. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I will select these front two vertexes. And I'm going to go to the green tab, which is the data tab for the properties uh, object. And I'll come to the vertex group uh, area right up here at the top and click plus to create a new one. And then I'm going to click assign. So we've created a new group. We can call this whatever we want. Uh, flag wave, let's say. And by clicking assign, it will assign whatever vertices are selected right to that vertex group. So I can test this now. I can hit deselect. You can see it deselects those. If I click select, it's only going to select those two vertices. It won't select these over here. Okay, so that's really, uh, really useful for all kinds of things. But we're going to come over to the modifiers and we're going to go to vertex group and there's flag wave. And now you can see what it's done is it's basically turned off the modifier 
for these two, but it's kept it here. And notice as well that it's interpolated pretty nicely. Like even though we've added this subdivision surface on and we haven't set vertex groups for all this stuff, they've inherited it. So all the extra subdivisions are being created by this modifier are inheriting those vertex groups so that you get this nice, um, we still have this, this fall off that's going on, which is, which is looking good. Okay, great. Now we need to do a little bit more to make this really feel right. Okay, so let's go here. We're gonna add in a displacement modifier. And with this displacement modifier, I'm gonna click new to create a new texture. And to edit this texture, I'm gonna name it something. I'm gonna call it flag, uh, flag wave detail. Okay, so that's the name of this new texture, but we need to do some stuff to this texture. So you can either click this button, which will jump you straight, straight to it. You can see the pop-up there says show texture tab, or you can just go directly to the texture tab, which confusingly lives on the object, but that's just where it is in Blender. But this allows you to access all the textures in the entire scene file. Um, so I can select this one here. And now you can see the details of what this texture is. And at the moment, it's set to image or movie, which it's not. I don't want to bring in an image. I don't want to bring in a movie. I'm going to click this and I'm going to change the type. I'm going to do one of these noise options. And you could try all these different types, see what looks good. But I'm going to go with clouds, which will give us this nice kind of billowy cloud-like uh, texture. And you can see immediately it's affecting my flag. I want to change my size. I'm going to make this really big. So I'm going to bring the size up just like this. And you can kind of get an idea of what we're going for. We're going to be creating an extra layer of noise on top. So I'll bring that all the way up to two. I think that makes a lot of sense. Now let's go back up to the modifiers tab and we want to say, okay, I'm going to let the coordinates of this thing be determined not by uh, local coordinates of the object, but I want to actually determine it by an object itself. And I'll show you why. I'm going to go shift A and we're going to create an empty in our scene. And this empty right here is way down there where our 3D cursor was. I'll just put it back here at this point. And I want this empty to animate. I want it to move uh, through my scene. And as it moves, I want it to move this distortion with it. Okay, so this could be like the wind, basically, the wind direction. So I'm going to change the coordinates from local to object on the displacement modifier. And I'm going to select this empty. I can just grab the little eyedropper and pick it there or pick it here. I can also just drag and drop this in. Now, if you notice, if I grab that empty and move it, it's going to take that displacement with it. You can see we get this cool extra bit of motion. So what I could do with this is I could either manually animate the position of this empty on the Y, or I could add a driver. So I could do the hashtag symbol and then type in something like frame, which is the built-in variable for getting the current frame that we're on, and then multiplied by 0.001 maybe to slow it right down. So now let's have a look at what that looks like. Yeah, that's way too slow. Let's increase that. Maybe just 01, still a bit too slow. Just go 0.1. And now that looks pretty good, right? So you can see that thing's traveling. You won't see this number updating unless you hover over it or move over it to get it to refresh the UI. But it's moving as our timeline moves. So as our current frame moves ahead, it takes each number here, multiplies it by 0.1, and then that's the value that it uses to place this empty in our scene. And you can see it creates this nice uh, motion on top of the wave modifier. Now we could probably pull this back a bit so I could take this strength right down and uh, mid-level I can keep it five is fine. And there we go. So now we've got a really cool double up of this effect on the surface of our flag. Which I think this looks really cool. Now we can also take this and adjust the scale. So if I scale this up or down, it's going to change the size of that noise. Could make it super fine or we could just have like a subtle extra bit we are getting a little bit of drift on this um, but we can use the vertex group again so i can grab flag wave and this will be the vertex group that gets affected turn that strength way up now you can see actually looking quite realistic we're getting this bit here and everything else is looking good we can get these little like curls with the wave and we're not using any sim so there's no cloth dynamics going on so it's very lightweight for our computer to uh work with. So that's how you can make a flag that animates without using dynamic. Very nice. All right, let's finish this off. We're going to create a poll. So I'm going to shift S, cursor to select it, shift A, mesh, cylinder, and I'll scale this cylinder down and scale on the Z. Little, little like ball up top here. 
that. Shift S cursor to selected, and then Shift A UV sphere. All right, let's get some rendering. Switch to render, render mode. I'm going to turn off scene worlds, and I'm going to pick something with blue sky. Turn up my world opacity like that, and I'm going to hide my widgets and stuff. I'm also going to create a camera. Jump into my camera, lock my camera to view by clicking the lock button. And I'm going to zoom out, create a nice view here like that. All right, great. Let's take the cylinder and let's make this pole metallic. So I'll turn metallic up and I uh, might turn the roughness right down. Let it really reflect the world a little bit. And then let's take the flag itself. I'm going to click new and I'm going to call this flag. There we go. Let's grab the shader editor and actually going to make gonna make the pride flag see all right so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to come to base color and i'm going to create a gradient texture and then i'm going to create a color ramp drop it here now this color ramp is going to do is going to change this gradient texture right so that we can you know basically put whatever we want onto it here and um, i'll keep these you know set up to the side and we need to have let's see uh, one two three four five six bands of color so we will have the first band here, and then the second band. Yeah, I think it's six widgets. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I want to evenly distribute these. So it's going to be like this, something like this. And I'm going to set these to constant, missing one. I'll bring that down, bring that down, and then... Plus, create one more, get that there. And now we can actually position these exactly. So if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, with the first one, and we'll go six divided by one. Is that right? No, that's, not, that's one divided by six. That's what I meant to do. I'm good at math. All right, and this one should be two divided by six. And this one will be three divided by six. And four divided by six. Five divided by six. And that one's six divided by six, which is right there. Great. All right. Now all I have to do is color pick. I'm pretty sure I can just reach off. Yes, I can reach off the screen. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and learned a few really cool things on how you can uh, make cloth like motion that you know is dynamic without having to stim the cloth and uh, using just some basic modifiers and some simple tricks we get some really cool effects so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did hit that like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel big thanks to everybody for helping us hit and surpass the 1000k subscription mark that's incredible can't believe it really appreciate all of you thank you to everybody on patreon for supporting this channel head over there if you want to get the full uncut version of this tutorial along with this project file and tons of other extra content it's a really great place go check it out you can also get that on youtube if you join the page at the all access pass level and higher thank you for taking a look at it and thanks for watching to the end of this video it's a huge help i'll catch you in the next one until then have a fantastic week see ya